the true story of the real-life video gamer turned professional racer, Jan Mardenborough, is at the center of the new movie Gran Turismo. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews and welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film Gran Turismo. This is in theaters right now and uh, it is one that I, I think you would want to see on the big screen. I think it works better um, with the intense racing sequences, but uh, we'll get into all of that here in just a moment. First, let me welcome you in to Dan Reviews. It. Thank you for finding this video. We've got a great selection of uh, TV and movie reviews for you to check out on the channel here. Uh, please consider subscribing, hit that notification bell as well. Uh, to get all the alerts for when I drop videos, or just uh, like the video or comment down below. All that stuff does, of course, help the channel out, and I certainly appreciate it. All right, so this movie uh, features David Harbour from Stranger Things. I think he is uh, bringing a lot of people into the mix here, but it also features Orlando Bloom, uh, and as the parents of Jan Martinborough, uh, Jimin Hansu, and I didn't realize this till after the movie was over, Jerry Hollowell plays uh, the mom, who... I know as Ginger Spice, and, and you may know her as well. Um, but when I saw the name Jerry Hollywell, um, I was like, wow, I didn't even know she acted, but okay. I, I mean, she does a fine performance. Um, and then playing Jan himself is uh, newcomer Archie uh, Madikwe, something like that. Um, he was in uh, Midsummer, and he was in that horrible, horrible uh, Jason Momoa TV show called C. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I've seen him in those things, but, uh, you know, not really memorable or, or more on the side, um, you know, as a support. But uh, here he, he is one of the main stars, you know, he plays this kid. Um, and this is a largely true story. Um, you know, movies like this always sort of embellish or shift timelines around a little bit. And this movie does exactly that. For example, um, you know, so uh, the, the basic premise is this kid uh, is huge into this video game Gran Turismo. He plays, you know, day and night. Uh, he lives, lives, eats, and breathes uh, this game. But uh, Nissan has an idea to, uh, hey, let's spice up the racing world and get somebody that is, uh, you know, this, this game Gran Turismo has all of the the tracks around the world, you know, that are big in great detail. You know, these players, um, you know, know these tracks inside and out better than probably any normal racer would because they only play it, you know, once or twice or whatever. Um, but these players, you know, oh, they play it all day. So they have this contest to see, you know, if they can actually sponsor a, a real racer. Um, and so he, he gets it. But, you know, in the real world, in the real story, uh, he actually was the third person to do this. They did this several years in a row. And Jan actually was the third person to, uh, you know, win this this title and become a racer. So, you know, obviously movie magic, you know, here again, they're sort of shifting things around a little bit, whatever. We, we sort of expect that. It certainly, uh, you know, can make for a more thrilling and, uh, you know, dramatic event. In fact, the most dramatic event, I think, in this movie um, did happen in real life and pretty true to what the movie is saying. But again, timeline shifted. It happened much later um, in, in Jan's career. But anyway, that's, you know, going into maybe a little spoiler territory, so we won't go there. But um, let, let's talk about the uh, the positives and the negatives of this movie. So I mentioned Nissan already. Um, this movie is littered with marketing for both Nissan and PlayStation. Gran Turismo is a PlayStation game. And so, you know, Jan's jacket says PlayStation and Nissan all over it. And then the car says Nissan and all the you know, the signs all, all around at the contest say Nissan. So, um, you know, obviously some, some sponsorship here that honestly gets a little distracting, but then you have to consider, okay, well, you know, race cars do have ads sort of plastered all over them. You know, the, the famous, uh, peanut M&M's car and all that kind of stuff. I don't watch racing, uh, you know, so, but, but I know that the cars are littered with, with marketing and stuff. So, uh, it's understandable, but it it gets to be really uh, too much. You're like, yeah, we get it. PlayStation made the game. Nissan's doing the contest. We we got it. It's it's like a, a, a its own character at, at some points. Um, but the racing sequences are fantastic. This was directed by uh, Neil Blomkamp, who um, mostly from 
what I know him for is sci-fi. He did District 9, um, which got an Academy Award nomination or, or several, um, but at least, you know, a Best Picture nomination. So that's huge. Um, he did this movie uh, Elysium with Matt Damon, um, which is very, very sci-fi, very futuristic. And then this uh, robot movie Chappie that was not very good. But uh, but again, in, in that sci-fi realm. So... Um, I wasn't really sure how the sequences were, were going to go. Man, the racing scenes in this movie are so exciting. Um, now I will say the lead up, you know, during the Nissan competition is a little less thrilling because we all know what happens or the movie doesn't happen. So it's like, all right, the, you know, let, let's move past this, get to him actually racing for real, um, and, and see how those, uh, matches go. So, uh, but, but the racing sequences are, are so cool, so great. Um, and the visual component to it as well. Um, not that it plays out necessarily like a video game, but, um, you know, Blomkamp will, you know, put little, um, you know, little chirons or whatever you call them these days, um, on the screen saying like, okay, you know, he's in ninth place here, you know, he's in 15th place here, wh whatever it is. Um, and it's not necessarily like a video game, but it certainly helps me who doesn't even watch racing, you know, to, to kind of follow along and, and know what's going on. Um, and, you know, for, and for somebody who doesn't watch like NASCAR or anything, I do like a racing movie. Like I loved Ford v Ferrari. Um, th this movie Rush, uh, that Ron Howard did is, is so great. And that's based on a true story as well. I guess they all are. Ford v Ferrari is too. Um, but in, in any event, so that is really the, the best part of this movie is the racing sequences. But other than that, look, uh, David Harbour always gives us great performances. Uh, he is the sort of grizzled, um, you know, X racer here. And his character gets a lot of, um, you know, emotional scenes because of his backstory, which we sort of unfold later in the movie. First, he's just the, the grizzled old dude. And, and then we learn a little bit more about him as we go along. And then a little bit more after that. Um, and, and his character, I think, is, is the best in the whole movie. Um, you know, you have Orlando Bloom, who is more, he's okay, but his character is, is like, you know, Mr. Corporate. And he always oh, is, is, you know, Jan good enough for the cameras and, you know, this and that and the other thing. And, um, so he's more concerned with that. And it's, it's a, it's a pretty stock character, but, uh, he, I mean, he plays it fine. And then, uh, this kid, Archie, he does well, you know, as, as Jan, um, don't really know him from, from much else, but, um, so from a biographical movie standpoint, it is very routine. We, we hit a lot of the same beats that we always hit in sort of competition movies like this. Um, but really, you come for these racing sequences because they're just outstanding. This is uh, one of these movies that the critics are a little bit divided on, um, but audiences have at 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's one of these, like, obviously crowd-pleasing movies, um, but is it technically... Uh, a, a good movie isn't technically done well. I think for the most part, you know, it is. Yeah, it's routine in its presentation, um, but definitely a, a lot of high energy racing sequences that I think deserve to be seen on the big screen. I leave Gran Turismo with a B and you can check that out in theaters right now. All right. Thanks so much for watching Dan Reviews It and we'll see you next time. Bye.